Welcome to this live stream service from the five churches of the Whitney and Minster Lovell Benefice. Welcome to you from wherever you're joining us from. I hope you've been able to join us okay this morning. I had big problems connecting, as my stressed out colleagues will probably realise, but I hope you've been able to connect with us okay. This service is uh, recorded and made available on the parish website so you can connect with us afterwards. It is the seventh Sunday of Easter, the Sunday after Ascension, and today we celebrate the reality that Jesus Christ is set free from the limitations of his earthly existence to be available to all of us, uh, disguised, hidden in the realities, the ordinary circumstances of our daily lives. Jesus says, I am with you always to the end of the age. And today we celebrate the reality of that in our ordinary lives and in the life of the world. So we begin our liturgy. Glory to the holy and undivided Trinity. God who is three in one and one in three. Who is beyond us, among us, within us. Who was and is and is to come, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. We gather together from our homes, some of us empty, some of us broken. Yearning for the Holy Spirit to fill us. We come among fellow seekers who have shown us the way. Trusting that God will continue to illuminate our hearts. We gather as Christ's body on earth, longing to be nurtured by the ascended Christ. That graced we may serve others that healed, we may bring hope to the world. Exalted God, you are the constant lover who never forsakes us. You are the mother who cradles her children. You are the teacher patiently repeating your words for us. We worship you as we hear the Ascension reading. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes <clears throat> stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Tag at the 
Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord. We come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. Lord Jesus, you suffered a cruel death on the cross for our redemption. Yet we have forgotten your pain and stayed in the realm of the evil you defeated. In your mercy, forgive us. 
God of mercy, hear us and help us. Lord Jesus, you were raised from death to bring us new life. Yet we have preferred the comfort of the familiar and the empty promises of a sinful world. In your mercy, forgive us. God of mercy, hear us and help us. Lord Jesus, you have ascended to your Father and our Father, your God and our God. Plead there at the right hand of God for our forgiveness and entry into the fullness of his presence. In your mercy, forgive us. God of mercy, hear us and help us. <clears throat> May the God of love bring you back to the heart of God, forgive you your sins and renew the living spring of life within you. In Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Let us pray. God of majesty, you led the Messiah through suffering into risen life and took him up to the glory of heaven. Clothe us with the power promised from on high and send us forth to the ends of the earth as heralds of repentance and witnesses of Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now a reading from the prophecy of Ezekiel. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe all my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. 
but now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I think it's fair to say that just about every piece of artwork that we could look at from across the centuries that depicts Christ's ascension does so in fairly similar ways. And these tend to be based on a literal depiction of the words from the Acts of the Apostles, which we heard read to us at the beginning of today's service. That written extract from Acts culminates in Christ being somehow drawn or taken upwards in a cloud, up into the sky. And he's usually then depicted hovering with bare feet just above the heads of the disciples who point upwards towards what's happening. I've always found this event of the ascension quite difficult to fathom out. Did it or did it not really happen in such a literal, physical way? Well, over time, I've reached a place where that has become far less important to me. That is how it actually happened or what exactly took place and instead looked at what it symbolizes and what it might mean for today and for now. For Ascension Tide this year, then I turned to an ancient painting of the story of the Ascension um, from something called the Rabula Gospels. You can see it on your screen now, hopefully. Thank you, James. These Rabula Gospels were written um, around the sixth century um, in Syria and the scribe was called Rabula, about which we know just about nothing. But there are several small paintings or miniatures such as this one, which accompany the writing. And uh, here is one of them. This is called Christ's Ascension. And true to form, we notice the obvious things straight away. Christ hovering in a semicircle of white, depicting the crowd, the cloud, and the 11 disciples watching and pointing with a mixture of facial expressions. Let's take a closer look at some of the details. Directly beneath Christ's feet is a rather obscure orange image with four large angel wings stretching out in different directions, wheels either side and the faces of four creatures. A depiction of Ezekiel's narrative of his vision of Christ. Ezekiel wrote, as I looked, a stormy wind came from the north in the midst, something like gleaming amber and in the middle, something like four living creatures one a human being, one a lion, one an ox and the other an eagle. We can see those four images around the four wings there. Their wings were spread out above, the fire was bright, there were wheels at the side, above them all, something in human form. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Here then, in the Rabula miniature, is an image of Ezekiel's vision, which calls us to recall how the glory of God can be present and revealed. Ezekiel also reminds us 
of the cloud with great brightness around it. And this in turn reminds us of several other clouds in scripture where the glory of God is present. Where the cloud is, there is God. So we recall the daytime pillar of cloud guiding the Israelites out from Egypt. The cloud on Mount Sinai in which God descended to meet Moses. The cloud of God's presence in the tent of meeting and at Christ's transfiguration, God spoke from within the cloud. Where the cloud is, God, God's glory is also. God is present, God is near, God speaks. The ascension then is a place where God both meets us in the cloud, hence the incredulity and amazement and no doubt confusion for the disciples, and where he draws his son into himself, into his glory. The physical, tangible human form of Jesus is reunited with the Father. And the cloud is part of the mystery of how this happens. Ten minutes, probably. We cannot see or touch or fully know God, and the cloud somehow enables us to come closer. Today, incense is a fantastic, tangible reminder of the transcendent God in the cloud, whom we cannot fully encounter in this world, but have only known through the incarnate Christ. The salvation story is shrouded in a cloud, a cloud of not fully knowing or not fully understanding, a cloud of mystery, but where the cloud is, there is God. And if we think about it, there are clouds all around us, if we care to look not just to the sky, but elsewhere too. Where might we find God? The angels either side of Christ in the picture are offering him crowns, reminding us of Christ as king. The tiny figurines in the top two corners of the picture, one sun on the right and the other moon on the left, remind us of creation, day and night. And the wind whirls around above the greens and blues of the earth and the sea below. These images recall the spirit hovering about and her part in the created order and remind us of Christ's presence within the Trinity, pre-existent but present at creation with the spirit and now being drawn back into the Father's presence. These connections within this picture remind us both of the eternal nature of God and the ultimate consummation of the world with God, whose time frame and points of reference are so very different and so alien to our own understanding. As Luke reminded us, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. This picture points towards a sense of completeness and wholeness. Mary, mother of God, almost takes centre stage. Look at her posture. Open arms in both praise and invitation, asking us to take our part in this story. Her face suggests that she ponders. Ponders what is happening, ponders what has happened, and perhaps questioning whatever may happen next. Her son come into the world, died and gone, come back again in resurrected form, and now is going yet again. Will he come back once more? What will happen next? Mary in this picture, I think, invites us to ponder with her amidst the confusion and the unknowing to maybe sit or stand in the cloudness alongside her, questioning and reflecting. The picture also points us forward to Pentecost. We can see flames of fire like tongues here heading down towards the disciples. The spirit is active and at work, 
integral to the Trinitarian whole and free to minister. Little could the disciples have known what was soon to happen just some 10 days or so after this extraordinary event. Even though they'd only just been told that the Holy Spirit would come, they surely couldn't have understood much at this point in the chain of events. Well, we don't have time this morning to try to fathom out which disciple is which in this picture, but we note Judas's absence. And Peter is easy to spot in the right side of the picture. But their collective body language is what I want us to reflect on to end today. The disciples are mostly pointing upwards and our gaze together with theirs is perhaps naturally directed in this picture towards the ascending Christ. This may present us with a challenge. That's because our human nature causes us so often to point instead towards each other, to point towards another human being, so often in an attempt to tell someone that something is their responsibility or to point in blame or to deflect something away from ourselves by conjuring up something which may not even be fully true. This picture reminds us of the importance of pointing toward Christ's truth, the truth, not just with our own demeanor, but also to encourage others to do likewise, to turn away from blame and criticism and to seek Christ's love and truth in all things. In baptism, we turn to Christ, sometimes helpfully actually physically enacting this within our baptism services, physically turning around our body to face the cross. The ascension then, albeit with all of its slightly bizarre imagery and perhaps stretching our imaginations to the ultimate, can be seen as an invitation. In this picture, Mary invites us in to ponder with her these mysteries. The disciples also invite us with them to point to Christ and to invite others to do likewise. Rather than dwelling then on how this event actually happened, we can understand the ascension as a call to conversion, to reorientate ourselves, to gaze on Christ and to look beyond the tangible difficulties of this world. So as we reflect on Ness's words, Let's affirm our faith together by saying the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
we believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, and we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Everlasting God, your son Jesus' ascension into heaven marked the culmination of the Paschal mystery. May we live life in the way his disciples did at the time, knowing no sense of abandonment, but patiently pondering and waiting the promised gift of the Spirit. O Christ, come to bless us. And fill us. Oh, Spirit. Holy God, we thank you for our church leaders, for Stephen, our bishop, and Gavin, his assistant, for Justin, our metropolitan, and the leaders throughout the Anglican communion. We pray too for our relationship with the Swedish church and the parish of Voxtorp, giving thanks for our shared friendship. We pray for all our sisters and brothers in churches together across the globe. And we pray for the life of our benefits, the communities we serve, the life of our schools, and especially this week for the hopeful appointment of a schools and youth worker to serve among us and for all involved in that process. We pray for all discerning their vocation at this time, especially for James and Lizzie, for your spirit to rest on them. We pray too for the persecuted church and for the ministry of open doors and heart. O Christ, come to bless us. Creator God, in this Christian Aid Week, we pray especially for the work and ministry of Christian Aid. We for the, pray for their projects and partnerships across the globe. We pray for their passion to enable people to have a life before death. We pray for all involved in raising funds for Christian aid. And we ask that you will bless them richly this day. O Christ, come to bless us. Creator God, help the people of your world make the best use of science and technology in order to achieve a better life on this, your planet here. Protect people of developing world countries from being exploited and underpaid for their labour. We pray especially for the fair distribution of the coronavirus vaccine to the whole needy world and for all scientists working on this at this time. O Christ, come to bless us. Gracious God, your son remained with his disciples after his resurrection, teaching them to love all people as neighbours. We pray for the neighbours of our communities, of our country, we pray too for all places where neighbours struggle and fight, especially praying at this time for the land we call holy. We thank you for our families, friends and fellow Christians and the people with whom we share our work and our daily lives and for all who share in the life of this benefice. We pray for those who are lonely, those isolated because of age or ill health, and those who find it difficult to make friends or to be accepted. O Christ, come to bless us. Loving God, we remember this morning those who are sick, sad or lonely, those who are brave and patient when things go wrong. We pray that they may be aware of your comforting presence and know that in your hands they are safe and loved. In a moment of silence, we pray for those on our hearts at this time. O 
O Christ, come to bless us. Loving God, we raise before you all who have died and who are now with your ascended son, Jesus Christ. We pray for those who have died recently, for their resurrection into your kingdom, for those whose anniversary of death and birth into paradise falls at this time, and all on our hearts and minds. O oh Christ, come to bless us. Everlasting God, open our eyes to see you acting in our lives and our hearts, to understand not only what you do for us, but what you call us to do, to live the gospel of Jesus Christ more faithfully. Loving and merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says, peace I live, leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We offer one another a sign of that peace. With confidence and joy, let us pray as Christ our risen Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. Jesus, we believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. We love you above all things, and we desire you in our souls. Though we cannot receive you in bread and wine, may we now still receive you in our hearts. Trusting in your gracious presence, we welcome and embrace you, and we rejoice in the promise that nothing can separate us from your love. Amen. As we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, 
make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your renewing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your equipping, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your empowering, make us ready for your coming spirit. We pray together. Be with us all, God, in all our daily struggles as we seek to follow you. Be with us all, Lord, in our periods of doubt and despair, and in our times of happiness, health and loving. Be with us all, Lord, until that time when in you, you in your kingdom of love and joy will know no end. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. May God give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you may grow in your knowledge of God. And may God continue to flood your hearts with light so that you may comprehend the confident hope given to those God has called and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.